Hello. My name is Chewbacca. I am a teaching assistant for Professor Mitchell. Today we are going to discuss the big ideas in psychology. Specifically, we are going to discuss the development of humans through the lifespan. Thanks Chewbacca. I'll take it from here. We're going to start by talking about the evolutionary perspective. Evolution isn't exactly what you probably think it is. It's not all about the transition from monkeys to humans or changes in the fossil record that indicate that we all come from a single organism. In psychology, the evolutionary perspective is basically that humans are relatively newcomers to the earth and our ancestors don't share a lot of common behavioral features that we have, but they share a lot of genetics that we have. The name associated with natural selection in the evolutionary perspective is Charles Darwin. And Darwin described natural selection as the evolutionary process by which individuals of a species that are best adapted to their environment are the ones that are most likely to survive and reproduce. So basically he reasoned that the intense constant struggle for food, water, resources uh, created this environment in which the best adapted would procreate more frequently. Those that do survive reproduce and pass on their characteristics that were beneficial at the time at which the preceding generation passed on their genetics. Adaptations come when there's changes to the environment in which those previously beneficial skills or attributes are no longer as beneficial. This whole realm falls under the notion of evolutionary psychology. Hi, I'm Sigmund Freud. Just kidding. I'm Charles Darwin. Before we get into my lecture, I have to address something. I am rocking this hat. Okay, let's talk about genetic foundations of development. Every person begins life as a single cell weighing only 1 20 millionth of an ounce. That tiny piece of matter houses our entire genetic code that orchestrates the growth, growth from that single celled organism to a, an organism that is made up of trillions and trillions of cells. Each cell at some point will replicate creating a, another cell that has the same genetic code inside of that. So where do these things actually work and how do they work? Well, we need to look at something called the cells and the chromosomes. The nucleus of each human cell contains chromosomes, which is a thread-like structure that's made up of DNA. DNA is a really complex molecule that has a double helix shape. It's like a spiral staircase that's been twisted around. And each of these double helixes contains genetic information. So our genes are the units of heritability which are basically just short sections or segments of DNA. They help the cells reproduce themselves and to assemble proteins. Proteins, in turn, are the building blocks for cells, as well as the regulators that direct the body's processes. Oh, hey guys, I didn't know we were going to do a lecture on cheating. Oh, dominance? Okay, I guess I can talk about that. I guess I'm supposed to talk about dominant recessive genes. In some cases, one gene of a pair always exerts its effects. In other words, it is dominant, overriding the potential influences of other genes, which is called the recessive gene. This is called the dominant and recessive gene principle. The recessive gene exerts its influence only if the two genes of a pair are both recessive. If you inherit a recessive gene for a trait from each of your parents, you'll show the trait. If you inherit a recessive gene from one parent, you'll never know if you carry the gene. Brown hair, farsightedness, and dimples override blonde hair, nearsightedness, and freckles in the world of dominant recessive genes. Can two brown-haired parents have a blonde-haired child? Yeah, they can. Suppose that each parent has a dominant gene for brown hair and a recessive gene for blonde hair. Since the dominant genes override the recessive gene, the parents have brown hair, but both of them are carriers for blondness and pass it on. If you want to get into the math of this, there's about a 25% chance that two brown-haired individuals who carry the recessive gene will have a child with blonde hair there is a 75% chance that the child will have brown hair, but there's a 50% chance that that child will be a carrier for blonde hair, and there's a 25% chance that they will have brown hair 
and be double dominant for brown hair, which means that they cannot pass along to their child that they will have blonde hair. Okay, so can I go deflate my balls now? <laughs> <laughs>